Hi everyone, this is Mrs. V Chen. Welcome to Form 6 Cost Accounting Lesson Number 10. So today's topic is about marginal costing for decision making. And then we are going to do two past exam questions. One is in A Level 2010 and then DSE 2018. So here is the question in 2010 saying that your builder tooth limited manufactures electric carpentry tooth and adopts absorption costing. And this company will produce three kinds of models for the customer, which are standard, intermediate, and advanced model. All right, so what is the thing that we have to calculate in B here is to determine the number of units to be produced for each two model in order to achieve the highest profits. But the major problem in this question is about the resources. So resources always limited so that we cannot produce all products for our customer. Therefore, we have to make a decision. And here is the diagram to analyze the situation in this question. First, we need to make a decision because resources are always limited. And then, which is about how to allocate limited resources on producing which products or which model. And then, of course, we choose the one which can achieve the highest profits. All right, so to work out which one give, gives highest profits, we can draw up income statements. However, we have two costing systems for income statements. One is absorption costing, one is marginal costing, since we have to make decision, so that therefore we are going to draw up the income statement, which is under marginal costing system instead of absorption costing system, because fixed costs are irrelevant for decision making but only variable costs will be very important for decision making. All right, so therefore, before we work out how much will be the maximum profits, we have to go back to making choices on how should we allocate limited resources on which model. So therefore, even though the company is using absorption costing system, so since we have to make choice, so that we are going to convert absorption costing system into marginal costing system and this is the idea on the marginal costing system so how do we allocate limited resources we focus on contribution per unit and therefore contribution per unit is equal to selling price per unit and minus all the variable costs per unit and here is my statement showing contribution per unit later on for each model standard intermediate and advanced now this is we start with selling price and minus all the variable costs so that we get contribution per unit. So this is how we are going to make our ranking and priority as to allocate limited resources. So I have selling price for each model given to us, 500 for standard, 670 and 900 for advanced. So we have selling price here from the question and also direct material for each model. So I use bracket for deduction, so this is 150, and this is 250, and then this is 140, so like that, okay? And then direct labor hour, so I have 100, I have 150, and then I have 200. All right, okay, and next you look at this paragraph saying that variable production overheads are absorbed at 20% of direct labor costs. So therefore, to work out this variable, so which is related to 20% of this direct labor costs, so therefore I have this 20% times 100, so 20 here. All right, so and what is that about this? I need to use calculator times 0 0.2. So therefore I have 150 times 0 0.2, so 30 absorbed at two variable production overheads and 200 times 0 0.2 which is 40. Okay so even though we have this fixed production overhead since we are making decision and fixed production overheads will be irrelevant for decision making so therefore we use contribution per unit to make decision as to allocate limited resources. Okay, now we get contribution per unit with advanced, which is highest, and then the second highest in the intermediate model, and the last one is 230. Okay, but the point is, 
So something very important. So what is the limited resources in this question, which is related to direct labor hours? So here, limited direct labor hours instead of machine hours. So therefore, to make decision, we don't just focus on contribution per unit because each model, they don't consume the same direct labor hours. So therefore, we have to adjust this saying that to make decision, to make ranking. So I have to change this per direct labor hour as we have limited resources on direct labor hour and they don't consume the same direct labor hour. Okay, so since we have limited resources on this direct labor hours and this is also the restriction of the company, therefore we need to analyze the direct labor hour in this way. And here is the formula, total labor cost is equal to direct labor hour times direct labor rates. And then this direct labor rates given to us in the question is $40 per hour. And this is direct labor cost. So to work out direct labor hour, direct labor hour for standards. So that would be $100 divided by 40 per hour. So I get 100 divided by 40. So which is 20.5 direct labor hour. Because if I set equation for that standard, I have this direct labor hour times the rate which is $40 and then gives $100 for standard so therefore I have this direct labor hour for standard that would be 100 divided by 40 so therefore I have 2.5 direct labor hour for standards okay I just use the same pattern I can get what is the direct labor hour for intermediaries I just get this labor costs divided by 40 so that which is 3.75 direct labor hour for intermediates and this one 200 divided by 40 dollars per unit so this is 5 direct labor hour so you can see even though advanced model gives the highest contribution among the three models right but at the same time advanced consume the largest direct labor hour so therefore to make decision we have to adjust this to statement showing contribution per direct labor hour instead of just per unit because they don't consume the same direct labor hour so that here I put direct labor hour for standard which is 2.5 direct labor hour and then this is for intermediates 3.75 direct labor hour and then advanced five direct labor hour okay so finally I get my final answer about contribution so here is contribution per direct labor hour okay I set in the heading here so therefore i have 230 divided by 2.5 which is 92 so this is 240 divided by 3.75 so which is 64 and then 520 divided by 5 which is 104 per direct labor hour actually i have this dollar sign dollar sign so now i can make our preference and the or the ranking to allocate resources or to the one with the highest contribution per direct labor hour so this is the first priority if we still have resources left we do standard and then finally if we still have resources left we can produce intermediary so this is how we make decision about ranking and priority Okay, so after making priorities and ranking in part A here, so we can come to calculate the, the number of units that can achieve the highest profits. All right, but again, something very important, we must start with the maximum capacity. And here we have the maximum capacity. All right, so which is 
4,780 direct labor hour is the maximum capacity. All right, and then again, we have this Carpentry Limited is one of our customer. And since the demand from Carpentry Limited is confirmed as per the sales contract signed earlier, since we have signed contract with Carpentry Limited sales contract, that means we have to keep our promise to allocate all resources to Carpentry Limited first. Okay, so here is my diagram. So we start with the maximum capacity, which is 4780 direct labor hour. So the first thing, since we have signed contract, we must allocate all direct labor hour to carpentry. So C-A-R-P-A-N-T-R-Y, as we have signed contract. So, so what is it? We promise to produce for carpentry 100 so unit. So and 100 unit times, what is the direct labor hour required? So direct labor hour required for for this standard is 2.5, so times 2.5 direct labor hour. And then we promise to produce 80, okay, for intermediates, uh, which is 3.75 direct labor hour. And then 50 number of units, and each unit require five direct labor hour. So therefore, we can work out, so what is required for producing uh, models for carpentry first. So here we have the results of resources allocated to carpentry. So 250 for, uh, for standard, and then this is for intermediates, and this is for advanced. And altogether, 800 direct labor hour being allocated to carpentry. And now we come to remaining capacity. So this is the maximum. So we start with maximum for 780 and minus 800 the direct labor hour so that we have the remaining capacity 4780 minus 800 so which is 3980 direct labor hour left for allocation to the remaining capacity and according to the ranking just now okay we should start with advanced model so the first priority so goes to advanced model all right, and look at the information here. So advanced model for customers, 350. So all goes to advanced model. So 350 units times, and each requires five direct labor hour. So I put direct labor hour. Okay, so what is the resources used up for advanced, so which is 1,750. So I put this direct labor hour. Okay. All right, so after advanced, now the second priority is standard. So the second priority, so we produce for standard model. And the information here is 1,400. So I put 1,400 unit and then times, and each one requires 2.5. So 2.5 direct labor hour and 1,400 times 2.5. So I have 3,500. So let's check. 3,500 plus 1,750. So you can see. So altogether it's 5,000 something already exceed the remaining capacity. So therefore, we cannot produce 3,000, uh, 1,400. I have to change strategy here because we do not have enough resources for that because we have constraint as the maximum capacity is this and the remaining is 3980 therefore we cannot use more than this direct labor hour and this will be the remaining for standard so 3980 minus 17500 so, uh, so 1750 so that this is 2230 direct labor hours left Okay, and then we do not know what is the number of units can be produced for standard, but now we know, okay, each one of standard will consume 2.5 direct labor hours. So I, I put 2.5 here, direct labor hour, so that would be 2230 uh, divided by 2.5. Okay, so the remaining unit left for standard will be 
892. All right. Okay, so finally we can make decision to determine number of units to be produced for each model. All right, so here is the analysis. So units produced for each model. So don't forget we have signed contract for carpentry, so we must keep our promise. So this is 100 goes to standard and then 80 intermediate and then advanced 50 units. Okay, and for other customers, we need to check this analysis. So, so we can produce 350 for this 350 for advanced model and then this is standard model 398 so here and then we have no more resources left for intermediate so and nothing for other customer so this will be the final answer for each model to be produced so standard 992 intermediate 80 and the advanced 400 units all right, so this is how we make decision to allocate limited resources as to maximize profits of the company. Okay, next we do a very similar question in DSC 2018. Again, we have three products and we need to make decision and calculate what will be the production quantity for each product. So something very important again, we need to check uh, what is the restriction in this cup in this company and the maximum capacity given to us okay where is it here so the full capacity is estimated at this 20,000 direct labor hour and also we have signed contracts which is non-cancellable sales contract promise to to produce this 1,000 units of product A to this customer okay again to work out each how many units to be produced we have to make decision in this way to have our ranking or priority first so here we have statement showing contribution per direct labor hour in order to make priority and ranking to allocate limited resources all right, so here unit price for each product so which is same as the selling price so I start with this 220 product 8 660 product boy and then 484 product C and then direct materials now we need to use calculator work out direct materials so that will be 60 for 1 kg and we need 0 0.5 kg for product A so that will be for product A so 60 times 0 0.5 so 30 for product A direct material 80 times 0 0.5 so I have 40 for product B and then 70 times 0 0.5 okay so 35 and then direct labor hours per unit and wage rate so direct labor cost is equal to the rate times labor hour so that rate labor hour so that would be 40 times 3 so I have 120 and then 40 times 8 which is 330 and then 5 times 40 so this is 200 okay and finally we have another variable cost which is variable overheads we don't need to calculate because it is given to us 10 10 10 so i have 10 10 and 10 okay and then i can put direct labor hour this time we don't need to calculate because it is already given direct labor hour consumed for product a this is three hours and then this is eight hours and this is five hours as the constraint here is direct labor hour Okay, so therefore contribution per direct labor hour, so for product A will be 60 divided by 3, and then product B 290 divided by 8, and product C 235 divided by 5. Now we can make ranking priority or production priority as resources always limited. Okay, so we should use all resources goes to product C, so this is number 1, and then the next one should be product B if we still have capacity left so we produce for product A okay so after that and then we can calculate
the number of units to be produced. So we start with this maximum capacity, which is 20,000 direct labor hours. So this is my diagram, maximum capacity, which is equal to 20,000 direct labor hour. And don't forget, we have signed contracts. Okay, so the contract is promised to produce 1,000 units for A. So that contract is all product A, which is 1,000 number of units. And that requires for A, which is three hours. So times three hours. So I, we have, we need to have direct labor hour, which is 3,000 direct labor hour. Okay, for product A. And then therefore, what is the remaining capacity? Will be 20,000 minus 3,000. So this is direct labor hour. Okay, and then I need my calculator. So what is the unit? Uh, what is the remaining capacity in direct labor hour left? So this is direct labor hour. So this is idea showing how do we make allocation of limited resources. Okay, so according to the analysis here, we should start with product C because product C gives the highest contribution per direct labor hour. And according to the information here, so the sales forecast is 1,600 number of units. So that I have this 1,600. Okay, I put units here on top and then requires five hours. So times five hours. So what is the total direct labor hour? So that is, okay. So this is 8,000 direct labor hour. And remember, not to exceed the 17,000 direct labor hour as the maximum capacity. So according to the ranking, the second one should goes to product B. Okay, so I have product B here. Okay, let's check how many units. 1,200 units. So I have 1,200 units times, what is the labor hour? Eight. So this is eight hours. So times eight. So 9,600 direct labor hour. So I need to check whether this exceed or not. Okay, so this is already exceed the maximum. So therefore I have to change accordingly because we cannot produce more than this total direct labor hour. So that I fix this as 17,000 as the maximum remaining maximum capacity. So what's left? minus 8,000, so that I have 9,000 left, so divided by 8 hours, so this is 1,125. Okay, so this is the remaining capacity used up for product boy, product B, and then this is also remaining units for product B. Okay, so here we have the final conclusion saying number of units to be produced for product A, which is 1,000 number of units, okay, as promised in the contracts. And then the remaining one for B will be 1,125 and for C, 1,600. So since we have worked out this based on contribution per direct labor hour, so therefore this will be the number of units that we can maximize the profits. So what is important to work out how many units produced the first thing we have to set priority and to arrange our order or ranking to maximize the profit using contribution per direct labor hour. Okay, so that's all about today's lesson. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.